Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thanks for having us here. Obviously, the island is uh, its not a bad place to come and visit to present these findings to you today. <laughs> Better than via Skype from the UK, I have to say. Um, so as you've heard, my name is Dr. Dominic Wilmot. Um, I'm a research fellow on the Non-In-3 project based at the University of Huddersfield in the UK. Um, and whilst he may look like my protection, as you've heard, this is Professor <laughs> Daniel Badushek, <laughs> also from the University of Huddersfield, who's a professor of criminal psychology. Um, and also the work package lead for the quantitative research that we're doing as part of the project. Um, so as you've heard, what we're going to talk to you about today is, or this morning I should say, because you're going to hear from ag us again later this afternoon, is the results of this survey, the pro-social survey that I'm sure many of you know we conducted before we went into creating the game. Um, hopefully some of you have read that, but we're going to give you a, a summary of the results, the most important results that we're pulling out of, uh, of that report and the research that we did there for you to see some of the impact um, and some of the problems and prevalence that you have here. So uh, Professor Adele James gave a, a great introduction to some of the background to the research. You're all in the field, you know, you know a lot about this, probably more than we do in terms of the, the unique perspective from Grenada and the Caribbean. So we're not going to go into too much detail in terms of the problem that you have here, the existing issues. What we're going to tell you about predominantly is the findings of the psychosocial profile uh, that was created. Thanks, John. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, but it's hot. <laughs> it's really hot. You know, we were in Barbados two years ago. It was a conference when we started the project. It was August. It was hot. Now, a week before the conference, before we came here, we received an email from Adela that said, guys, sometimes it's chilly in the night. Well, I thought it was going to be minus 20. <laughs> I actually measured temperature was 25. In England, or where, I, where I come from, 25 is hot. <laughs> Just let you know. <laughs> uh, before we uh, go into results, I'd like to personally and knowledge everyone working with me over the last two years, not just two years, but I'm, I'm just talking about this project, on this specific work package. So I'd like to thank, uh, well, I'm not going to thank myself, that's ridiculous. I'll do that later, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Agata Dubovska for, uh, 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 for helping me in terms of research design, data analysis, and writing the report. Also, Dr. Dominic Wilmot, Naughty boy. <laughs> Dr. Nicole Sheritz and, and Professor Adele Jones, thank you very much, guys, for uh, uh, supporting me in, in this project, I mean, in this work package. Also, I'd like to acknowledge uh, very, I mean, the most important people in, in, on this project, country directors, field workers from Barbados and Grenada, Dr. Uh, Ina trotman Jemut and Dr. Hazel Dabrio. I think it's not Bria, yeah? How do you pronounce this? Gabriel. Oh, that oh, was good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> it's just my accent, you know. <laughs> also, we have a huge help, and I personally had a huge help from, from um, Vicky Hart and, 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 and Jill Kirkman. Vicky is our administrator, you know, and, you know, I love you, and both of you, you know, and I got Aww. lots of support from you, yeah. you know, and, and it's great to have you there, honestly. And also, I'd like to acknowledge my uh, undergrad students who helped me to enter data into SPSS. And uh, Tabata, Rebecca, Rene, Abby, Brescia, Brooklyn, Emily, Huma, Emily, and Ila. Thank you, guys. I know this is going to be on YouTube. They're going to be really happy. So let's go to the results now, yeah? <laughs> no more thank yous? No. <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking. OK, so in terms of the prevalence of child abuse and neglect, as I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, recent statistics from the World Health Organization suggest that 25% of adults report having been physically abused as children, okay, so one in four. 36% were emotionally abused, and 20% of women and 5 to 10% of men reported experience of sexual abuse. Of course, we know these figures are likely to be an underestimation, even what's reported there, and we know that those figures are quite shocking. As Adele mentioned, and where we take our name from on the project, uh, global figures now suggest that one in three women will be a victim of domestic or sexual violence in their lifetime. So what are some of the consequences of child abuse and neglect? Well, we know there's a, a, already an existing uh, body of research and literature which tells us that 
Adult victimisation of violence, particularly for women, is something we know is, is a consequence of child abuse and uh, child maltreatment. Um, also, becoming and creating future perpetrators of gender-based violence. Again, particularly within males, we know this occurs. Uh, depression, anxiety, self-harming behaviour and suicide, aggression, antisocial behaviour, you know, criminal behaviour in itself. Um, a whole number of high-risk factors, essentially. High-risk sexual behaviours and even some health variables and health factors as well, just from being uh, the consequence of, of experiencing abuse in childhood. So with this in mind, what were some of the objectives or what were the core objectives, essentially, of uh, this first stage of the study, this psychosocial survey that we did, we conducted before um, creating the game and going on to evaluate whether that game worked? So firstly, we were interested in assessing the prevalence of exposure to violence in the family uh, in Barbados and Grenada, including verbal violence, non-interpersonal violence, physical violence towards other family members, and serious violence threats uh, among children. We are also interested in examining the prevalence of physical, emotional and sexual abuse both inside and outside the family among boys and girls separately. Thirdly, to explore girls and boys' perception of gender-based physical violence, attitudes towards male physical domestic violence, acceptance of social norms regarding physical violence against girls, as well as general violent belief systems. And you'll see how these became important as we move on. And finally, to investigate the prevalence of violent and bullying behaviour among girls and boys, something which I'm sure some of you come across as part of this overlapping co-occurrence between these variables. So how did we do it then? Who did we look at? What, was, what did this psychosocial survey involve? Well, we spoke to a large number of children from both islands, 1,378 children and adolescents, I should say, um, 900 of which were from Barbados and... 470 of which were from Grenada. So a large sample for the population of children within those kind of age categories. <laughs> that included 660 boys with an average age of 13 and 689 girls with an average age of almost 13 as well. Um, and quite simply, if you want to oversimplify what we did, we, gave, um, we asked the young people to complete anonymous psychosocial cross-sectional surveys essentially. Okay, so in line with those study objectives I just highlighted, students were anonymously asked to complete um, the psychosocial service. So could, we could establish who they were. So what is the prevalence in Barbados and Grenada of these, these variables that we're interested in? And, and, you know, and then later down that we can set a baseline and see potential impacts of the game, which you'll hear about later today. And you can see also there's a good split there between uh, primary, secondary uh, and youth offenders in terms of the samples between countries. So straight to the results. What did we find? Well, violence in the family, starting there, we found that 52% of participating children in Barbados and almost 60% of children in Grenada were exposed to verbal violence directed towards their mothers or siblings. Perhaps not surprising. Girls in both countries were more likely to observe verbal violence in the family than boys. I'd be interested to hear as we go on, perhaps after or even later today, how these things resonate with your practice and what you think, anything that's sh shocking or surprising. Um, more than 30% of children in Barbados and Grenada observed non-interpersonal violence perpetrated by somebody in the family. So this includes things such as violence directed towards property, breaking or destroying something on purpose. This is an example of an item or a question that we asked some of the young people. Uh, boys in both countries were more likely to have observed interpersonal violence in the family than girls. So think about what that might tell us in terms of the perceptions or acceptance of violence and who who we expose that to within the family. Um, very specific then to physical violence, we found that nearly 30% of children in Barbados and approximately 40% of children in Grenada were exposed to physical violence in the family. <coughs> Almost 19% of children in Barbados and approximately 25% in Grenada were exposed to serious violent threats made by another family member directed towards mother or siblings. Again, I'm interested to see how this resonates with you. Nearly 28% of, of the Barbadian sample and almost 38% of the Grenadian sample reported experiencing physical abuse in the family. So this is no longer exposure to, this is actual experience of. So this is what the young people reported. Um, Barbadian boys were more likely than girls to experience physical abuse in the family. Again, perhaps we would accept that in line with the literature that exists around the world. In Grenada, there were no gender differences 
for physical abuse. So there's no difference in, in terms of experience for boys and girls. So what about emotional abuse? Well, we found that almost 35% of youths in Barbados and almost 41% in Grenada indicated having experienced emotional abuse in the family. So again, quite prevalent, you can see there, particularly in Grenada. Um, and this is things, for example, being threatened or constantly made to feel bad. So the traditional things we would contextualise as being emotional abuse. In Grenada specifically, uh, emotional abuse in the family was more common among girls than boys. Interesting in itself. And 6% of youngsters stated they experienced emotional abuse almost every day. For me, that's quite a shocking uh, figure. Just a simple statistic to come out of this psychosocial survey. More shocking, perhaps, um, and perhaps a little more contentious, is the results and findings around sexual abuse in the family. So in excess of 9% of youths from Barbados and almost 13% from Grenada admitting having experienced sexual abuse in the family. Boys in both countries were more likely to report having experienced sexual abuse in the family when compared with girls. This is definitely a shocking statistic, um, something that we, we, we didn't expect to find. But very important and interesting nonetheless to look into some of that. And something I find shocking here, almost 4% of children in Grenada reported experiencing sexual abuse almost every single day. Almost every day. So outside the family, what were some of the results outside the family? Well, we found that nearly 38% of the Barbadian sample, and almost half, almost 50% of children in Grenada, indicated they experienced physical abuse outside the family. So you can see the prevalence has increased here. In Barbados, boys were more likely to experience physical abuse outside the family than girls. And there were no gender differences again here uh, in Grenada. No difference between the rate of prevalence for boys and girls for physical violence outside the home. In terms of emotional abuse, nearly 60% of youths in Barbados and almost 70% in Grenada reported experiencing emotional abuse outside the family. So again, there's a heightened risk or prevalence here outside the home. Grenadian girls reported more experiences of emotional abuse outside the family than boys did. Again, perhaps this is in line with what we would expect. In terms of sexual abuse then, outside the home, outside the family, more than 13% of participating youngsters from Barbados and more than 18% from Grenada admitted, admitted having experienced sexual abuse outside the family. So one in five almost in Grenada. Sexual abuse outside the family was more common among Barbadian boys than girls. Again, so that, you know, the theme is the same there, regardless of whether the abuse happens in the home or outside the home. Uh, and nearly 3% of children from Grenada reported experiencing sexual abuse almost every day outside the home. Again, I think you'll all agree it's quite a shocking figure. So in terms of gender-based violence, attitudes and perceptions then, what did we find? Well, more than 56% of the Barbadian children and nearly 66% of Grenadian children indicated agreement with the statement that most boys hit their girlfriends. So there's an acceptance here, a high degree of acceptance with almost, you know, in Grenada, two-thirds there. Uh, and girls were more likely to agree with the statement than boys, which in itself ties into a broader problem in terms of attitudes towards violence. Nearly 51% of youngsters from Barbados and nearly 62% of youngsters from Grenada thought that most hub husbands hit their wife. Again, they showed agreement with this statement. And again, girls were more likely than boys to think this was the case. So this acceptance is clearly an issue and something that hopefully re-education can, um, can help to reduce. So over 40% of children from Barbados and Grenada indicated agreement with the statement that most wives hit their husbands. So the reverse is also true. So rather than this being particularly... I see some women in the room laughing about this. <laughs> I hope that's not a statement of uh, acceptance. I'm joking, of course. But clearly this ties into a broader issue in terms of the acceptance of violence in, in all directions, essentially. Not, it's not just violence towards women. Uh, and over 50% of children from Barbados and Grenada indicated agreement with the statement that most girls hit their boyfriends. So there's a, almost a mapped on pattern there. It's, di it's directly reflective mm -hmm. either way around. So just to tie up the results then, in terms, of course, anybody that is interested in reading the full report, this is just a selection, so we can make that available. As, a, as Adele said, that you know, everything's on the website and can all be downloaded for free. Um, Boys from Barbados and Grenada compared with girls from the two countries were more accepting of male physical domestic violence, so overall, social norms regarding physical violence against girls, 
and the use of violence in general. So there's clearly a broader issue uh, in terms of all these distinct factors. And finally, boys from both countries were more likely to engage in violent and bullying behaviour than girls, which you could argue is something that's coming. It's an outcome of the acceptance of violence generally within the home and outside the home. Thank you. Dominic. Uh, I think, uh, well, I get feeling that this is quite shocking results for you, right? And probably the difference between official statistics and what we found in, in this study is huge. Because we decided to use different method of investigating these issues. I've learned that working with prisoners. When you ask a prisoner about something, they're never honest, they're afraid, they're biased. But if you leave a questioner anonymous and you guarantee the person will never gonna find out who answered, they are extremely honest. Children, actually, this is going to be on YouTube. I'm not going to make this comparison. <laughs> but children are also threatened, shamed. But when you guarantee them, listen, no one's going to know. Not even myself, researcher. They are actually pretty honest. That's why there is this huge difference. Because we use different methods to investigate. We just want to find out the truth. Only the truth can give us, you know, a, a base for any invention, an evaluation for invention. Hope that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right, good. I see you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the second stage of this project was to uncover or investigate patterns of co-occurrence between uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, gender, uh, the, the, uh, the child abuse and neglect between male, males and female sample, of course. Second was to, this is something coming from my research, you know, I introduced a new theory of psychopathy, which I tested among German population, children, prisoners, and we also were interested in, you know, in psychopathy of the female girls, and what actually predicts uh, this development of this, of this personality traits. So that was the second aim. And third, was to look at the association between child abuse and violent cognitions. Because you already noticed that children hold strong violent attitudes, right? They get this built cognition. What, what, what's the reason? Okay, I'm going to answer that in a, in a few seconds. So first, uh, using a latent profile analysis, we look at the... Uh, uh, physical violence in the family, physical violence outside the family, uh, emotional violence, and sexual violence within the family and outside the family. We are interested in the co-occurrence of these uh, 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 variables. And this is what we found out. We've got a low class of children in both samples girls and boys, who score extremely low on all the variables. So 39, 40%, around 40% of children actually are not experiencing any sort of violence, which is good. But this is not working. OK, it's working now. There is around 17% of children who experience all type of violence, 17%. And this exposure leads to, okay, let me just show you this. This exposure leads to engagement in to violent and hostile behavior. All of them, all 20% of them. So see, being, being exposed to violence and experiencing violence, children tend to be violent. Okay. This research is already published. Uh, Professor Jones already mentioned about our publications. All I have to do is just go to our website or email us directly. We're more than happy to share 
all evidence with you. Now, the second, based on my theory of psychopathy, which I published in 2016, and we just finalized this in a book chapter, we were invited to contribute to the uh, a big book on psychopathy. Uh, there are four different dimensions of psychopathy. The first one is called a lack of affective responsiveness. You could say it is something like lack of emotional empathy, sort of, but we just go in depth. The second one is lack of cognitive affectiveness, which is lack of cognitive empathy. And then there's interpersonal manipulation and egocentricity. These are the four factors. Using a very sophisticated analysis, latent profile analysis, we establish five different profiles of children in terms of psychopathic traits. We are actually referring only to females, to girls in this research. And what is, we were quite concerned because one of the profiles is the, this one here, This is the high psychopathy profile. It means that almost 5% of young girls showed extremely high score on all four dimensions of psychopathy, 5%. We're also interested what predicts, what, what, what contributes to the development of the psychopathic traits. Ladies and gentlemen, every single person, every single girl in this high psychopathy group was sexually abused. What I'm trying to say here, maybe it's too much, but by abusing, sexually abusing children, we create a future psychopaths. Maybe it is too much. But based on this research, we conclude. I've done similar research in prisons, I interviewed over 2,000 offenders, and I was interested in their profile in terms of a child abuse and neglect, retrospectively. 5% uh, prison population experience child abuse and neglect, including, of course, rape. All of them from this group were psychopaths. See? So it's not just research with children, with adults, offenders show the same. There is a pattern. Conclusion is now, I'm pretty sure by abusing, raping children, abusing sexual children, we produce future psychopaths, we produce offenders. Uh, going back to uh, Dominic's statistics, and in terms of the attitudes, violent attitudes, this, this, this violent cognitions, what is the best predictor? The best predictor of violent cognitions is not exposure to uh, domestic violence. It's actually being a victim of domestic violence. Okay, Dominic. I think something important to add there as well is when we know, when Dan's talking about the consequences um, of sexual abuse, is we've also found that very rarely does sexual abuse occur on its own. In more often than not cases, sexual abuse co-occurs with other forms of abuse. So if children are sexually victimized, the reality is they're also, I'm sure many of you know this already, emotionally victimized and physically abused as well. So in terms of the recommendations then, what can we potentially feed back? Well, what would we recommend at least? So to empower, ch empower children through age-appropriate educational programs focusing on explaining children's rights, what constitutes abuse, and how and whom, or how and to whom such experiences can be reported. Uh, child abuse and neglect is most likely to be investigated when a child self-reports abuse, and therefore these educational programs for children are clearly crucial, and this is you know, something on the ground, day to day, this is one way that we can perhaps make a biggest impact. Um, to support parents who are, not at an increased, who are at an increased risk of using physical and emotional violence against their children through appropriate workshops concentrating on improving their parenting skills, equipping them with non-violent discipline techniques and offering a holistic approach to family functioning. 
and also all professionals who have contact with children must, we would argue, uh, be trained at entry and service levels to recognise signs of abuse. Uh, and this appears especially important in Grenada where professionals, as we heard from the Minister earlier and you will all clearly know, um, are mandated to report suspected abuse. Um, although there are media campaigns in both countries aimed at adults in the society which seek to raise the awareness of the frequency and unacceptability of child maltreatment, as well as challenge social norms uh, which condone violence against children, the effectiveness of these campaigns needs to be evaluated um, and they need to be strengthened uh, as they go on. Also, children with aggressive tendencies should be recognised as early as possible. Uh, I know some of this is saying what you already know. We're not trying to tell you things that you don't already know. We're just trying to reiterate that based on the research, based on what we found from the psychosocial profile and the more advanced uh, analysis, that we're in agreement with some of the recommendations that should be made. Um, training for childcare professionals in recognising uh, problematic behaviour which may continue into adolescence should also be provided. And finally, programmes for the use with a particular focus on boys again directly out of the research, are needed to challenge their violence, accepting attitudes and provide a society acceptable outlet for aggression. In this context, it may be beneficial to consider the potential benefits or, of pro-social video games which scaffold children's experience and challenge pro-violent attitudes using narrative and audio-visual equipment. And you'll see later on when you're exposed in much more detail to the game, you're able to see the game working. And also when we're going to evaluate the game later, you'll hear about us from that. Um, how this can be beneficial uh, to changing some of these cognitions. Thank you very much.